Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to uh, paint a stop motion head made out of Sculpey uh, with bead eyes. If you're not sure how to make one of these, check out my other video, how to make and build a stop motion head. Uh, as you can see, I'm super speed mixing paint. Uh, obviously, I sped that up. I uh, just wanted you to kind of see the colors I used to mix that, red, yellow, blue and white. I try not to use any pre-mixed skin colors because I think it looks unnatural. Um, and as you notice, I started with a dark color, uh, kind of a brown, and I am tucking it into all the little cracks and grooves, making it sure it goes into the nostrils, right up around the eyes, cover all the hair. And the reason I use this kind of undercoat is if I miss something later, it will have some kind of color to it, either you know, it won't be green, or if I'm using white Sculpey, it won't be white. It'll kind of have an undercoat to it. And it'll also give the whole thing a little more uh, cohesiveness as far as using a unifying color underneath. Okay, so I've got the head covered with the dark hair color. Um, and here I am furiously mixing again another uh, lighter skin color using the white, the red, the yellow, a little bit of the blue. And I'm also touching in a little bit of dark brown here. Uh, and this time when I'm painting it on, I'm not globbing it on. I am covering everything pretty much except for I'm leaving the nostrils and a little bit of dark line around the eye. Uh, maybe where the hair might shadow the skin, I might leave a little bit of the dark color. But otherwise, I'm covering pretty consistently, uh, but not thick, globby paint. I want to make sure that it's nice and smooth and skin-like when I work like this. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the whole thing, making sure to carefully get in between each hair, cover it with a skin tone, a general uh, medium skin tone. And as I work, I start to realize maybe This time I can let a little more of the undercolor show through. So now I'm going to paint the eyes. Starting with a dark blue, I'm going to paint a circle right around that hole in the bead. Um, before I get too far, I want to take a little bit of black and poke it down in that hole, make sure that I don't leave any of that white showing in the deep dark hole. So that's what I'm doing right here. You can see I've got a little bit of black, getting it so it's not globby on the brush, but it's still got a decent amount of paint. And I'm kind of tucking it in there and rolling it around um, so it doesn't get on the blue, but it also fills the whole thing. You can kind of see me doing that, touching it up there. Freshening up the dark blue, and then while the dark blue is wet, I'm going to go in with a light blue, and I might even sometimes use pale white, uh, I mean pure white, if the blue is, is really wet. And I can kind of mix that light blue and leave the dark ring around the iris. Um, painting freckles with a darker color, similar to that first skin color I started with. Uh, making sure I just get the cheeks and the top of the nose, not going too nuts. And here I am kind of toning it back down, some of the weird shapes with the um, other skin color, the original skin color. Using kind of a reddy, reddish brown, I'm going to wipe off most of the paint from the brush and gently dry brush over the texture of the hair. It's going to kind of sit up on all the um, different pieces that I made the hair out of it, but it's not going to go down in the cracks and the grooves. That's going to kind of stay that dark brown. And I can dry brush uh, lots of layers and keep going until I get it the color I want it. But I don't want to be too aggressive or it's going to kind of get down in those cracks where I still want it to stay dark and that texture to be different from the skin. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with the head, and here's a little test uh, so you can see some of the animated features, and there's the replacement mouse I used, and thanks for watching.